This is General Miguna Miguna speaking with you from forced exile in Toronto, Canada. Why are so-called African billionaires stingy? By no means am I going to glorify uh, their status as billionaires because most of them are actually not innovators, creators, inventors, industrialists, or entrepreneurs, but just looters and deal makers who use either their positions in public office to steal public resources or those affiliated to them by family ties or otherwise exploit those relationships to steal from public coffers. Chuck Finney, the founder of Duty Free Shoppers, was once one of the world's richest persons. The man Forbes refers to as the James Bond of philanthropy as over the years donated nearly all his vast wealth to charitable causes such as education, human rights, and health. In 1997, the CNN founder Ted Turner stunned the world when he donated one billion US dollars to the United Nations. Since then, he has emerged as one of the world's most generous philanthropists. However, in terms of the staggering numbers and consistency, the most generous billionaires in the world by order of how much they have donated to so-called human rights and humanitarian causes are Bill Gates, Melinda Gates, and Warren Buffett. All three are American citizens. Years, year after year, for more than a decade, the Gates have consistently donated 37% of their fortune to improve healthcare around the world. I am not going to deal with the criticisms others have laid on their feet that they have been trying to control the population, especially of people of color. That will be for another day. On his part, Warren Buffett has donated 36% of his fortune. From 2000 to 2019, Buffett alone has donated about $46 billion for the improvement of health care through the Bill and Belinda Gates Foundation. Both Gates and Buffett have promised to give away their entire wealth to charity by the time they die. Of course, we will be able to verify whether that happens or not for those of us who would die after them. With an estimated net worth of $131 billion in 2019, the Amazon.com CEO and founder Jeff Bezos is ranked the richest person in the world by Forbes magazine. In 2019, I said followed by Bernard Arnault, a French business magnate, investor, and art collector, who is reputed to have $97.6 billion U.S. dollars. Microsoft's co-founder Bill Gates was, as of 2019, reputed to have $96.5 billion U.S. dollars, and the legendary inventor, investor, Founder and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, as of 2019, had 82.5 billion US dollars. Even though Europe's richest person, Arno, is not considered generous, he donated a reported 11 million US dollars towards the fight against the Amazon fires in 2019. He is known also to have previously donated hundreds of millions of dollars towards environmental causes in the recent past. Michael Bloomberg donated 100 million US dollars 
and the stingy Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan donated $2 billion to charity in 2018, respectively. Previously, Bloomberg was reported to have donated more than $6 billion in charitable um, giveaways. Considering their wealth portfolios, those are not large numbers, but they are still gigantic compared to the disgraceful record of Africa's billionaires. When Bezos donated a whooping $2 billion to charitable causes in 2018, the New York Times nicknamed him Stingy Jeff. This was an appropriate moniker when comparing his donations with the amounts that Gates, Buffet, Zuckerberg, and other wealthy persons in the world had donated vis-a-vis -vis their net worth. I'm not sure what adjective the New York Times would ascribe to Africa's wealthiest oligarchs. Unlike the majority of the wealthiest individuals in the 20th, 20th and 21st centuries, who either accumulated their vast portfolios through years of investment, investments, inventions, industry, and productivity before venturing out to commendable philanthropy, the richest Africans overwhelmingly accumulated their riches by holding public offices in their countries or being affiliated to those with political power and then stashing most of their plundered wealth in tax havens abroad out of reach of their impoverished citizens. African billionaires like Joe Eduardo dos Santos Teodoro Obiangwema Basogo, Isabel Dos Santos, Daniel Arap Moy, Uru Kenyatta and their family members never invented anything. They were not and have never been genuine entrepreneurs. They have never run genuine businesses. They are not inventors, innovators or industrialists. The hundreds of billions they have are derived directly from public assets. Even though the Moi and Kenyatta families have millions of acres of productive, productive land, own big liquid banks, billion-dollar insurance companies, leading shopping malls, breweries, timber, tea, coffee, and milk produ producing, uh, uh, production plants, Uru Kenyatta's wealth is reported by Forbes to be only $500 million. Dollars. In other words, they artificially deflate or reduce their wealth to look poor because they are stingy. According to Forbes, the richest Africans are Nigerian businessman Aliko Dangote at 13.8 billion US dollars. My position is that the Moise, the Kenyatta's, and other African so-called leaders who have plundered their countries are much are worth much more than that. The second is South African mining magnate Patrice Mosepe, another looter at 3.3 billion, Nigerian telecom bank and mining businessman Mike Adenuga at 2 billion US dollars, and Sudanese entrepreneur the only one who seemed to have made his money legitimately, Mo Ibrahim at 1.8 billion US dollars. And that is the only African who has been a true, genuine philanthropist, Mo Ibrahim, a man who made money from his own sweat, energy, creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Even though Forbes notes that the Dos Santos combined net worth is more than 22.3 billion US dollars, they are not listed among Africa's richest persons, perhaps in recognition that the sources of their vast wealth are dubious. By 2011, when Forbes started monitoring the philanthropic activities of Africa's wealthiest persons, none of the African billionaires had given a pledge to donate to charities. Out of the list of super rich Africans, only Dangote and Mo Ibrahim had been involved in, in philanthropy previously. Even though Dangote, 
Mosepe, Mo Ibrahim, and Zimbabwe's Steve Masijiwa, who is worth about 2.4 billion US dollars, had pledged to donate at least half of their net worth to charitable causes by July 2019. None had actually given away any significant percentage of their wealth to charity by the end of 2019. Significantly, none of the extremely wealthy former or current African leaders has contributed towards any worthy cause. None is reported to have donated towards scholarships for African students, medical or scientific research, and absolutely nothing towards alleviating the problems of high youth unemployment, homelessness, poverty, or in the search for treatment or vaccination of COVID-19 or coronavirus, HIV, AIDS, pandemic, malaria, or Ebola. The Swedish billionaire inventor Alfred Nobel established the Nobel Foundation that has supported the development of world peace, academic and scholastic excellence, research in science and medicine, and promoted inventions, innovations, creativity, and technological research, as well as many other humanitarian commitments in the world because he did not want to be remembered as, quote, a merchant of death for having invented the dynamite. Yet, no wealthy African billionaire, regardless of his or her source of wealth, has founded, established, or supported any worthy intellectual research or scientific causes. Nor have, I, have they contributed to world peace by promoting peace foundations or university chairs for research in peace. Although there are numerous universities, colleges, schools, hospitals, airports, and stadia named after famous and rich Africans, their names were not inscribed on those institutions due to their generosity towards the construction, funding, or equipment of those institutions or installations. Their names adorn the institutions as benevolent homage to their power, brute power, most of which they acquired illegitimately through electoral fraud or through military dictatorships or coups. For instance, the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, Kenyatta International Conference Center, and Moi Forces Academy in Kenya are public facilities that were named by former dictators Kenyatta and Moi respectively during their reign. It was not because they constructed them from donations from their looted wealth. Unlike in North America and Europe, where major professional schools, faculties, scholarships, and hospitals are named after wealthy business persons, entrepreneurs, inventors and innovators who have generously, don generously donated in support of those institutions or research endeavors, I have not encountered the same occurring uh, in Africa through African billionaire initiatives. In 2019, for instance, the University of Toronto received 100 million US dollars from Heather Riesman, and Gerald Schwartz, Schwartz for, quote, a deeper examination of how technology shapes our daily lives, an artificial intelligence initiative which will be based on the newly established Schwartz Riesmann Center. Joe Soros, a Hungarian-born Holocaust survivor and billionaire inventor or investor, uh, investor rather, who moved to the UK decades ago to study before making his fortune, has funneled billions of dollars of his wealth into his open society foundations, which promotes democratic practices in more than 100 countries globally. Soros gave thousands of scholarships to bright South African students during apartheid. If African billionaires had not stashed most of their people's wealth in Switzerland and other jurisdictions outside Africa and had utilized it to educate millions of deserving children, built hospitals, the much-needed housing, 
and provided other basic necessities of life like clean running water for their citizens, Africa would have had millions of healthy, highly educated and skilled citizens who would have in turn placed their efforts in working to make their societies food secure, productive, healthy and prosperous. According to the latest World Health Organization, 8.8 million Africans died from communicable diseases in 2016, with the leading causes attributed to lower respiratory tract infections, accounted to 10%. HIV AIDS accounted to 8.1%. Diarrhea accounted to 7.4%. And both malaria and tuberculosis accounted for 0.4%. 4.6%. That's millions of deaths, deaths that could have been prevented. And we are not talking of COVID-19, by the way, which by today's date, the 4th of April 2020, has killed less than 100 Africans. But everybody is speaking about it. Everybody is wailing about it. People have been kept in their homes under illegally imposed curfews under the pretext that they are trying to prevent the infections and spread of COVID-19. Why? Because COVID-19 does not know class. COVID-19 can kill both rich and poor Africans. So the rich and tyrannical African leaders are trying to remain safe, hoping that by keeping poor Africans in their homes, they will not be infected. Anyway, to continue with my position, uh, thought on the issue of the stinginess of the African billionaires, apart from these diseases, the second highest cause of death in Africa is conflicts and wars over resources, territory, and all arising from contestations of power. Not diseases, not COVID-19, not the spread of pandemics. It is conflicts and wars over resources, territory, and or from contestations of power, including post-election violence, which are deliberately conceived and perpetrated by despots such as Uhuru Kenyatta. Has the refusal or failure of African billionaires to donate towards worthy causes contributed to the current state of poverty, homelessness, and oppression by most African regimes? I would answer that question in the affirmative. African billionaires understand that poverty dehumanizes and weakens the people, resulting in their subjugation. A, sub a subjugated people are unable to demand accountability from their rulers and the billionaires who thrive in their environments. With limited education, high unemployment, lack of basic necessities of life, ravaging diseases and an acceptable government, uh, an accountable government presiding over the plunder of natural resources, most African countries experience fraudulent elections and authoritarianism. While the people are usually or often too weak, too poor, too disorganized, too marginalized to be able to organize a popular resistance and reclamation of their liberty. It is arguable that African billionaires don't donate as much as their counterparts from Europe, Asia, and North America for selfish reasons. Their failure to donate weakens the majority of the people and make plunder possible. It perpetuates impunity and institutionalizes dictatorship. That is the weakness of the majority of the people, which is inflicted or caused by the so-called billionaires. African billionaires understand that a weakened, ill-educated, poverty-stricken, exploited, and disease-ravaged populace is much easier to manipulate, oppress, and exploit than a highly educated, healthy, well-informed, and empowered one. That is why, as of today, the despots in Nairobi have announced that if you don't wear a face mask, you can't shop in a supermarket. You can't buy food. 
yet they don't understand that most people have to make a decision in the morning whether to buy water, paraffin, bread, or to go without. Essentially, people live from hand to mouth. So to tell them to buy face masks before they can buy food essentially means that they will buy face masks at the risk of dying of starvation, of hunger, of going without food, going without water. Unless, of course, the despots and the billionaires who have looted the, the money belonging to the, uh, to, to the ordinary Africans were to provide food, face masks, medicine, ventilators, housing, clean running water, public comprehensive health care to everyone. In other words, the failure by African billionaires to donate is deliberate and planned. They know that significant donations to scholarships, research institutions, and towards poverty reduction, alleviation of ignorance and improvement of health and food security, for instance, would result in major structural transformations and empowerment of the people which they deem inimical to their financial and political interests. Comrades, patriots, fellow citizens, we must organize, we must mobilize, we must come together and say no to the continued plunder, exploitation and repression of the people. Viva! <laughs>